Hello again everybody. In this video we're going to take a look at scripts to start up and shut down all of the components that go along with the eBusiness Suite. And in this example I'm looking at specifically uh, the R12 version of the eBusiness Suite. So when we're looking at scripts to start up our R12 components there's two basic scripts that we need. One that will start up the database and when we start up the database it's not just a question of the database we also have to start up the listener obviously that goes along with the database and then the database itself and then a second script that will start up all of the eBusiness R12 installation components Oracle makes it relatively easy for us they give us scripts that do all of the different components for us we can do them manually if you want to but Oracle provides us with a script to do that one of the key things of starting up all the different components successfully is to make sure that all of your environment variables are set correctly and again Oracle makes it relatively easy for us because they create these files these environment files that we can source at the Linux or Unix level that will set all of the environment variables for us so the question then becomes should we create a script that does the two things set our environment variables then start up all the database components and then have a second file that sets the environment variables for the mid-tier and then starts up all of the eBusiness Suite R12 components. A couple of assumptions I'm making as part of this video. Number one, that you're running on either a Linux or Unix box. On Windows it's a lot easier to do startup, especially the database components because they're uh, what are considered to be uh, services in Windows. So once they are, are once they are those are created you can ser simply set the service to start up automatically when your server reboots and the database and listener will get started automatically I still have to start all of your eBusiness suite components but that's relatively easy to do I'm also making the assumption as part of this video that both of the nodes your database and your EBS node are running on the same server that's certainly not always the case and it, many times it's advantageous to break these different pieces into different components on different nodes so it's easier to manage you have a greater flexibility in terms of management in terms of scalability makes security a little more difficult makes management a little more difficult but it gives you a lot more flexibility but for this example we're going to be running both nodes off um, my same uh, server, my Linux server that's running locally here. So I'm going to hop into a tool now called Putty. And if you're not familiar with Putty, it's a free program that you can download that gives you uh, secure terminal access to uh, Linux or Unix servers. And I obviously uh, use that guy locally for my machine here. So I've connected to my uh, EBS server, which is a, a Linux server. It's running Oracle Linux 5.7. Uh, Oracle eBusiness Suite R12. I've connected as root, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to su over to the um, user who installed all the Oracle software, which in this case is called Oracle. And if I do an ls, you can see in my root directory here I've created a couple of scripts start apps .sh, start db .sh, stop db sh, stop apps .sh. Should all be pretty self explanatory. <coughs> based on the names. So let's take a look at StartDB, first thing that we want to do. Pretty simple stuff. First thing it does is it's going to source the file that Oracle provides for us that has all my environment variables. One thing to note is that any file that I source within a script, the environment variables live inside that script only. They don't become part of my session. So once I source this information, all the environment variables are there for me automatically. My Oracle Home, my Oracle SID, uh, my path statement, everything like that. But they only live within the script itself. It doesn't exist outside of the script. So I'm going to source that information. I'm going to start up my listener. This is the standard command, right? LSNRCTL listener control. I'm going to start up. And um, if you follow the standard ways of creating new databases for the eBusiness Suite, uh, a, a specific listener will be created for those databases. I installed uh, what's called a Vision Demo Database as part of my R12 install. You certainly don't have to do that, but I install that. So I have this uh, VIS instance out there. That's going to be my database instance. And it's also going to be my listener name. So I'm going to run this command to start up the listener for VIS. Then I'm going to run SQL plus and I'm going to issue the commands to start up my database. But I have this kind of strange looking command here. SQL plus, two less than signs, and EOF. What in the world does that mean? 
what that means is I'm going to run the SQL plus command and then I'm going to pass information that's in this file everything leading up to this EOF file marker inside the script so I'm going to run SQL plus and I'm going to pass the command connect slash as sysdba I'm going to start up I'm going to exit and then once the script sees this EOF command then it knows that it's it's finished pumping information into the SQL plus command and then finally to make sure that everything is up and running and looks okay I'm going to issue this command at the uh, command line to say show me all the processes that are out there that's what the PS does EF means show me all the details don't show me all the system uh, processes that are out there and then I'm gonna pipe that to the grep command and I'm gonna limit only processes that start with ORA underscore this will show me all the different processes that are associated with my database so I'll see some things like uh, the process monitor the system monitor and I can eyeball that real quick and say okay everything looks like it started up okay I can see all the different processes so I think I'm in pretty good shape there's no error handling inside this script you can have error handling at every line to say you know does the um, does uh, the environment variable file here even exist if it doesn't break out of the script maybe send a message to somebody I can check to make sure that the listener started up okay the database started up okay if it doesn't maybe I can shoot off a quick mail to somebody to say hey I was trying to run the script to start up my uh, environment and it didn't start up for whatever reason but because I I'm trying to keep things simple here I don't have any of that kind of error checking involved so let's go through and try to execute the script now how do I do it I just say okay I want to run this from my local directory and I want to do start db dot sh so you can see things scroll by pretty quickly here first thing it does whoops still running here so it's still gonna keep updating my uh, screen here but the first part here is obviously the listener it's starting up the listener we got uh, a command completed successfully so then we went into SQL plus it connected to SQL Plus. It started the. It's starting the database right now, and you can see that the database is mounted. Database is open, disconnected from SQL Plus here, and then I issued that PS minus EF command to show all the different processes that are associated with my VIS database. So looking at this real quick, you know, I can see there's the process monitor, uh, there's my database writer, there's log writer, there's check pointer, there's the system monitor. A uh, whole bunch of other processes that are going on here that are unique to an eBusiness Suite database. Everything looks pretty good. So I can eyeball this stuff. Maybe I want to write all this information out to a log file. Uh, if I'm starting up my database at you know two o'clock in the morning, I can write it out to a log file, email it to myself when I come into work. I can then take a look at the log file, make sure everything started up okay. So I think I'm in good shape there. So what's the next piece? The next piece is going to be starting up all of the mid-tier components. So if we take a look at start apps.sh it's even shorter than the one we had before right one of the first things it's going to do it's going to set all my environment variables that are unique to my mid-tier not to my database but to my mid-tier and then it's going to run the script called adstrtal.sh seems a little cryptic but it actually makes a lot of sense when you break it down the AD, there's a whole bunch of scripts out there that are unique to the administration of an Oracle database. And they all start with AD. And it's just a way of classifying the scripts uh, so it makes it easier for you to, when you see them on your system, you know what they are. STRT stands for the word start. And AL starts for stands for all. So this is uh, administration script to start all components. Now you might say, well, why in the world do they have it cryptically like this? Why don't they just you know write it out, make it easier for you? Well, on some operating systems, you really don't see this anymore, but older operating systems, you used to have this limitation of you can only have eight characters in a file name to the left side of the, the dot and three characters in the file name to the right side of the dot. Uh, this is just kind of left over from um, you know older versions of these administration scripts running on older systems. You may still have an older system that has this kind of limitation. Obviously, most modern operating systems, um, you don't have this limitation anymore. You can certainly take a look at this environment variable file here. It sets a whole bunch of uh, environment variables all over the place. Uh, there's a lot more for the mid-tier than there are for the database. 
and again if we put all of these into a script we don't have to worry about kind of stepping on different versions or you know resetting different versions of environment variables because it only lives within the script none of these live outside into my actual environment so uh, all of these environment variables will be set here this script that then needs those environment variables to start up all the different components will then use those environment variables and as soon as the script ends everything should be okay so one of the things I'm going to do is let me just cat that file again start apps.sh and just before I run this I'm going to hop into this directory where all of the scripts are so I'm going to cd into that guy take a look at all of the different scripts that are out there so you can see there's my ad start all there's my ad stop all um, stops all the different components and then we have all of these other pieces here and what start all is going to do is it's going to call all of these a lot of these different components so here's cmctl that's for the current uh, concurrent manager and it's going to start that guy up uh, here's another one for um, the core of all of my Oracle application server components. Here's another one that's going to start up all my forms components. Uh, here's another one that's going to uh, check to make sure that the processes that monitor the Oracle application server is working with the form server properly. So it's going to call all of these ones. I have the ability to call any one of those guys individually if I want, but I can also just use the start all and stop all scripts uh, that will do all of these things for me and uh, write them all out to a log file so that I can review them at the end to make sure everything started up okay. Now I don't know if this is going to happen but I'm going to go back here and I'm going to actually execute the start all start apps.sh scripts. One of the things that can happen is after I've started up my database which I did successfully and I'm going on maybe three or four minutes ago I can run the start apps.sh and I may get some error messages. Oracle does a lot of work behind the scenes when it starts up the database and there's a whole bunch of processes that go along that are unique to R12. So if I run the start database script and then the start app scripts right next to each other, I may get errors in the start app scripts. And they're not real errors, it's just all of the processes that go along with the database haven't started up yet. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen now because I've waited about three or four minutes in between starting up the database and actually trying to run the script now. But let's run it and see what happens. If you take an all of the fault, uh, all of the defaults apps and apps are the username and password for the apps user so it's going to go through here and you can see that it's starting up and it's scrolling by the screen it's going to give me a summary at the end and what we want the summary to say is status equals zero if status equals zero at the end then everything started up okay and we'll be able to hop into our uh, environment if it doesn't say status equals zero at the end that means one of these components failed and we have to go through and look at the log files that go along with each one of these sometimes the log files have really meaningful information in it sometimes they don't but one of the things to note that is if you start up one of these components and you see exiting with status 150 150 sometimes means that the process hasn't started because the database process hasn't started yet. Even though you started up the database and everything went successfully, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on behind the scenes. So it's always a good idea if you have a couple of scripts like this that start up the database and then start up your mid-tier to kind of wait maybe five or ten minutes in between starting up the database and starting up the applications tier just to make sure that the database has started up and has all of its components cached and everything like that. Not seeing any errors up to this point, so I'm suspecting that everything is going to is looking good, but we won't be 100% sure until this script actually stops running. I'm going to pause the video for now, and then we'll come back once the script is finished. So we're back. The script has finished, and you can see start apps.sh exiting with status zero. If it's anything other than zero, you'll have to scroll up on uh, your command window here and see which components failed for whatever reason. Again, be sensitive to the fact that if you see 150, it may just mean that uh, the database hasn't started up all its components yet. If you do get to that situation, what I suggest you do is run the stop all script, stop all of the mid-tier components, wait five minutes or so, run the start all components again to see if everything's working successfully. So again, nothing fancy in either one of these scripts we take a look at each one of these again
start DB simply sources the file that's out there and it's always going to be in the same location it's going to be your Oracle home which for me on this particular box was home Oracle EBS and then if you go into DB tech stack 11.1.0 if you go into that directory you'll see an environment variable there that has the name of your instance underscore EBS dot ENV you want to source that guy start up the listener start up SQL plus pump the standard uh, commands to start up your database. Connect to SysDBA, start up, exit, and you want to have everything between end of file. And again, I just put this sanity check here at the end to say, okay, show me all the processes that are running. And if everything looks okay, then I know I'm in pretty good shape. In terms of starting up the application server, even simpler, right? In your Oracle Home, which again, Oracle Home, uh, Home Oracle EBS on my server, you're going to have a directory apps, app stack, APPL and again you're going to have apps and then the name of your instance so in this case it's apps vis underscore EBS dot ENV that's going to have all my environment variable information and then home Oracle EBS that's my Oracle home again INST for my uh, instance apps again the name of the instance vis underscore EBS if you give your instance a different name this will obviously be a different directory and then admin scripts you'll find all the startup and shutdown scripts for you to shut down and start up all the different components that go along with your R12 installation.